and welcome back so we are just uh, loading up ready to dock at Omega now Omega is a fascinating little place it's run by Aria and is a sort of um, yeah kind of a scum and villainy type of location now because we haven't recruited anyone yet we have to stick with Miranda and Jacob and if you've managed to level up you get the option to either auto level up or manually level up your characters now I've gone with uh, manual leveling up and I'm kind of going heavy on the biotics for my supporting characters now I'm not planning on using Miranda too much so I think do I go for Cerberus officer I can't remember um, oh no I go for warp with her yeah now warp is a really nice useful ability and um, I always like doing that you can also pick your squad weapons I'm basically gonna just leave them with the default ones for now and we now get a really nice little introduction to Omega. So we get pestered by a Solarian, and then Arya's um, uh, what's it, bat Batarian bouncer kind of chases him off. And we basically get told to report to Afterlife and talk to Arya before doing too much. Um, and once we've dealt with this Batarian, we will get our first companion for the Normandy. Now, rather disappointingly, this was DLC. And as I say, I, I personally found it a little bit of a disappointing character, although the loyalty mission is actually pretty decent and you um, get some very interesting choices depending on whether you're a renegade or a paragon to make on that particular mission. Um, but yeah, I, I find Zaid, um, who's a bounty hunter, just a little bit irritating uh, as a kind of paid for content. Now, if it come in the game, I don't think I would have been quite so fast so it's just a little bit bizarre he's just sort of waiting for you in a corridor almost and uh, he's uh, slightly roughly treating his prisoner and it appears he's made some arrangement with the elusive man that uh, he's neglected to pass on to you and you just have to say okay fine whatever so um, yeah this is a, another kind of renegade paragon interesting choice you know you're kind of just standing by watching him uh, beat up this guy now it could be this guy deserves it the batarians are not a particularly sympathetic race they are a bit unpleasant they're slavers and all that stuff and zaid is as i say uh, an interesting character from the point of view is he's not really someone you kind of admire if you're a paragon um, but as a renegade, uh, maybe you, you, you quite like him because he's, you know, he's meant to be a decent shot and he's pretty tough and all that. But as I say, I, I, I didn't really warm to Zaid, um, but you know, his loyalty mission was a little bit of fun. And um, you got a couple of bits of chat, and then he just joins you. So as I say, um, nice, easy to recruit him, and we get to see uh, some of his uh, justice being meted out very shortly towards his prisoner. Anyway, after that we're going to go to Afterlife and chat to Arya. We wander around a bit and then we pick whether we want to meet Morden or Archangel as our first proper recruiting mission. So this video is going to stop at the point where I've got that choice to make and um, the next video will actually be the recruitment. And uh, yeah, that, that's going to be pretty good fun. So anyway... Um, sit back enjoy the dialogues that are going to come up and if you're ready for the kind of shooty action that's going to be the next video in the series now i am noticing my video game um uploads are getting way less views than my board game ones so that's something i'm gonna have to think about and maybe uh, make a decision on uh, going forward but uh, in the meantime i'm gonna press ahead with mass effect and see how that pans out and um, as I say, might make a channel announcement to, if things continue the way they are. Anyway, there you go, there's Zaid um, shooting his prisoner um, to stop him running away. And um, yeah, he's obviously the sort of guy who uh, believes the end justifies the needs. Now one thing I do like about Omega is uh, it's obviously an area that's knocked um, kind of obeying the norms of uh, societies full of scum and villainy and you can actually go to various points on the map and depending on who the companion is with you when you uh, click on these sort of observation points they'll make some little comments so Miranda here talking about how she doesn't like visiting here she always feels she needs to kind of decontaminate herself 
But anyway, I guess before we get in too much trouble with Arya, let's go have a chat with her. And there is a chance to have a little interaction with some uh, Batarians. And um, you can basically be nice or be horrible. And uh, I'm meant to be a nice guy, but I seem to have picked quite a few uh, renegade options on uh, Omega so far. And uh, basically you can choose to tell him, look, um, I, if you give me lip, I'll kill you. Whereas I think the other choice is like, yeah, I don't need a fight with you. Just, you know, I'm just here, not looking for any trouble. Um, get a move on. So anyway, uh, yeah, look at that. Another load of renegade points plus five there. Um, so there, this was an interesting take on the Knights of the Old Republic idea of good and, uh, or light and dark side of the force. Anyway, as you can see, uh, lots of, uh, a sari in this location and the chance to buy some brandy for Dr. Chakwa. Anyway, uh, Arya is lurking up on top here and I think you can have a dialogue with uh, this guy over here but uh, not till after you've spoken to Arya by the looks of it. Now Arya is voiced uh, by a famous Hollywood actress so um, enjoy that when uh, you get there. And it's an interesting character, is Arya. Now, there is some discussion as to who she actually is, because she obviously is known to the galaxy by other names in different locations. And um, she's obviously an elderly Arya, being uh, elderly Asari, been around for quite a while. And um, she's cautious. And a very intriguing character and it would have been good if there'd been some DLC maybe to interact with her a little bit more and uh, as you can see she's very confident that basically she is Omega and nothing happens without her at least knowing about it or approving it depending on exactly what's going on and as I say she's she's fascinating really because she looks like she's going to give you a lot of information and you can have quite a good chat with her but when you go to certain areas she just clams up and is not interested in continuing the conversation and uh, as you can see she she's a bit of a badass and uh, you will discover um, that she even has her own little pet Krogan so uh, yeah you, you don't want to mess with her she, she she's uh, obviously got a lot of history that we don't know about and as I say there's been a lot of gossip on the internet as to what that might be and if you've played Mass Effect 1 you might be uh, know where I'm going with their hedging around uh, the gossip. Anyway I love the atmospherics of this scene uh, kind of some of the camera angles the lighting effects they they can look pretty cool at times and uh, the fact that she's just casually sitting there and saying hey um, you know I know you're here I know you're gonna cause trouble but you know you're doing it sort of under my sufferance, really. And uh, you get to ask her about Maud, and you get to ask her about Archangel. And in the background, of course, you get uh, some Asari doing what they do best. And, um, yeah, it's a, a kind of really sleazy, dirty rundown, and yet somehow successful uh, place. And as I say, if they ever had done a, a spin-off series, I think... Uh, being a kind of bandit or bounty hunter or something based out of Omega could have been a pretty interesting uh, tale. And I believe in Mass Effect 3 there is some uh, cool missions that bring you back to Omega. Uh, I don't particularly recall those, I'm afraid, at this point. And I have no intention of uh, doing a playthrough of uh, Mass Effect 3, um, probably yeah, because I'm not tempted of ever playing Mass Effect 3 again. Because uh, although it had some really cool moments, as I say, it's just overall not an experience I, I want to repeat. Whereas I'm quite happy to play Mass Effect 2 and definitely very happy to play Mass Effect 1 many, many times. Anyway, um, I think we are going to not get too much more of, out of Arya. So a um, couple of extra little chat options and then we'll be done with her. And then we get to wander around to a few other locations. And there are various shops that you can go to. There's a couple of rooms you can go to. But the main reason for being here is the two recruitment options. So you can work with the Blue Suns as a Merc and go and get Archangel. Or you can break your way 
into the quarantine zone to help out Morden, who's dealing with a plague that doesn't seem to affect humans. And um, that's got some nice little story behind that, which again, in the overall narrative of Mass Effect 1, 2 and 3, it becomes quite clear uh, that there is a galaxy-wide activity by the Reapers that is causing various... Uh, issues um, which will in theory will come to fruition in Mass Effect 3 where you'll either defeat the Reapers or be overwhelmed by them. Anyway, um, just trying to work out where we are in the conversation. I, I'm pretty sure we're very very close to the end here and um, yeah a little bit about Morden. Now what's interesting is he is allegedly a Solarian Doctor but he's a little bit more than that and as part of Mass Effect 2, you do get to hear quite a bit more about Morden, who does become a fascinating character, and he has some really good stuff in Mass Effect 3, and in fact um, is a real kind of pull on the heartstrings mission in Mass Effect 3, and there are all sorts of variations on that particular mission which really, really um, tie up, as I say, the Mass Effect 2 to Mass Effect 3 arc in a very satisfactory way, and is probably the best part of Mass Effect 3. Anyway, we're done. Let's go off and have a look around at other bits. Now, um, there is a recruiter for Archangel. There is also a little sub-room with the Patriarch, who uh, you can have some fun interacting with him, and that can affect how Arya views you. So anyway, uh, great uh, little bit with the Blue Suns Trooper here who is quite merciless uh, um, with uh, the recruits, as you will discover when we do the Archangel mission. Um, basically, uh, <laughs> the mercs are being hired to facilitate the Blue Suns getting their hands on Archangel, who has managed to upset pretty much everyone on Omega. And um, obviously this recruiter recognises that we're not just kind of general scum, we actually look like we you know, fairly decent uh, mercs and um, you get a chance to be a paragon or a renegade coming up shortly with some young kid who's keen to make some money and you can either choose to let him join you on your quest against Archangel which uh, is potentially a little bit risky for him as he's an untried person with a dodgy weapon or you can choose to intervene and persuade him that maybe coming on the mission's not good for his future and um, that's quite interesting. Now, what I find fascinating about the Archangel mission is uh, you get to see a lot of sort of the politics of the kind of underworld, um, which builds on some of the st stuff that goes on in Mass Effect 1. And um, it's a really, really cool little mission. And um, I've played it at times, and it's been really, really hard to get through that mission. Uh, other times, it's been quite easy. And again, even on this easy playthrough uh, skill level that I'm currently on, uh, you can have a little bit of a tough time getting through that mission at times because if you get caught in the wrong position at the wrong time, some of these guys are packing some serious weapons. And if you fail to um, do some little bits and pieces earlier in, in the mission, uh, that makes your life harder. So it's a really great mission where you, you get to see bits and you can interact with them to make your life easier in later missions. Uh, or later part of that mission, I should say. Anyway, um, this guy looks like he's pretty much done. Uh, he's not really giving me much information. And uh, I've agreed, yes, I want to go and deal with Archangel because, of course, uh, I, I don't actually want to go deal with him. I want to recruit him. Anyway, here's the young man I was talking about. And uh, I decide I am going to intervene and stop him going on the mission. So, uh, you know, he's giving me a bit of chat, and yeah, I'm hard dude, and um, I'm basically like, yeah, don't think so. So here you go, little trigger action, so uh, grab hold of him, give him what for, point out his weapon is a load of old rubbish and he should get a refund, and uh, I should expect an email from him later where he uh, basically realises I've actually done him a bit of a favour. So that's the recruiting mission unlocked, so I can go off and get Archangel. And there you go, nice plus seven Paragon, aren't I nice? And we now get to meet with um, 
the patriarch shortly but before that there is actually a bar downstairs with a batarian barkeeper who doesn't like humans very much and unfortunately for him he's going to pick on the wrong human so here we go afterlife and um yeah let's go get a drink from this guy and he's a smarmy little what's it if you watch his face i think he gives you a kind of little fancy grin after you order a drink uh, because he knows something you don't and um, he, as I say, is going to regret deciding to uh, pick on me. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Nice drink. Little smirk. Off he walks. And, oh, um, yeah, I seem to be having a little bit of a problem. So anyway, uh, we're waking up in the uh, alleyway to discover we've been poisoned. And in fact, I'm not the first person to be poisoned by that barkeeper. And as I say, uh, is it Mass Effect 1? I think there's a bit where you can uh, take out a jump gate, or is that Mass Effect 2? Anyway, there is a mission whereby um, you can actually um, cause... Oh, that's it. In Mass Effect 1, there is an asteroid that they're going to crash into a planet with a load of humans, and that there's definitely a problem between the Batarians and the humans, and I guess that barkeeper... Um, is part of that because yeah humanity and the batarian race definitely high friction there so uh yeah here you go henna's talking about how his friend jake got poisoned and died and uh you can choose to say um yeah that barkeeper is is for it and uh there's a couple of options how you deal with it i think i go with the renegade option of basically forcing him to drink his own drink and uh, obviously that does not work out quite so well for the uh, Batarian. Uh, here's another one of these bits where you can interact with your companion. So Jacob here, he's really concerned with humanity and uh, the way they're being treated. And here we go, first shop that we're dealing with. So very important upgrade for the ship. So make sure we get that first. And then I uh, think I run out of money shortly. Um, to buy some bits and there is a guy on pilgrimage here who we can choose to help out by either chatting to other shopkeepers or um, you know you can maybe just you know give him money to help him out he's trying to get passage off world so um, basically I decide to be a nice guy and give him a load of money so yeah that. that's a choice you should make uh, I also realize now that I should have uh, got a price discount before buying stuff off his short off his store and um, that's always a good idea to be honest but there you go so there you go thousand credits off you go so let's get ourselves back to the bar and um, yeah get some payback on that barkeeper now for some reason I um, decided to go up the stairs not sure why uh, I decided to do that, but uh, I obviously uh, thought it was sensible at the time. But um, yeah, if you come round to this other side, there is another marketplace. There's a Batarian preacher uh, who's obviously a little bit disturbed. And this is uh, the area where you can choose to go and try and recall, uh, recruit uh, Morden. And uh, as I say, I, I think I'm going to go with Archangel first this time round. But basically, just if you turn round and go down the corridor off to the right here, um, you can actually go in to uh, gather up Morden, and that's another really cool little recruitment mission. So we've got uh, was it an Elcor, um, and of course they always uh, speak how they're feeling, uh, which is a, a great little feature and. Uh, you always get the joy of Elcor Hamlet, which uh, is a very nice little touch. So um, this guy's obviously um, the main trader, and um, he's very keen on trying to get as much business as possible, even if that means stuffing up people. Um, you can also buy yourself model ships for your cabin, and um, the hack module would be quite nice to get, but unfortunately I don't seem to be able to afford that for some reason. Um, so yeah, um, one of the big problems I have with the game is uh, sometimes there's all this cool stuff you need to buy and you can't afford any of the damn stuff. Um, but that's why it's very important to have a good persuasion, I think, uh, skill and uh, persuade people to give you discounts. And here you go, I'm apparently being good by walking away and telling him I can buy stuff somewhere else. 
and okay he doesn't give me a full discount but he does give me a partial one so yeah nice little um, micro set of scenarios around here where you can get to do a bit more of that you know walking and talking stuff that I enjoy but as I say when we get to the next mission uh, there will still be a load of uh, walking and talking um, that's for my private collection that magazine pay that no mind um, anyway so yes as, as I was saying you you get to um, do a lot of walking and talking but then you also get to do a lot of the shooting and a lot of people are of the opinion that Mass Effect 2 really upped the um, the game in Mass Effect 2 when it came to the running around in and out of cover using biotics and shooting and a lot of people think that's where Mass Effect 2 is is just miles better than Mass Effect 1 and that was a trend that continued into Mass Effect 3 and uh, I'm hearing good things about Mass Effect um, Andromeda with the the jump pack and the mobility side of things um, now I don't particularly subscribe to that as I say I, I'm a really big fan of this role playing side and it was really good in Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 not so good in Mass Effect 3 it's not bad don't get me wrong um, but uh, yeah I enjoy all this sort of stuff and you know I, I'm a big fan of the old school point and click adventures that LucasArts used to do so anyway um, we are getting close to the end of this so we found out that something weirds going on with these guys here and when we go to see Morden we will encounter this gentleman again if I remember correctly and he's up to no good trust me on that um, he is not someone um, that we should be so keen on and we also get to meet some of these guys uh, a bit later on and I can't remember if it's in Mass Effect or Mass Effect 3 Mass Effect 2 or Mass Effect 3 uh, where I think you get to film I think it's Mass Effect 3 you get to film a TV ad potentially with one of them and uh, unfortunately he gets a little bit of a rough treatment so um, they're, they're an interesting race in my opinion they um, yeah they kind of eat the dead or something uh, I seem to recall um, so yeah kind of a very interesting new race they introduce in Mass Effect 2 anyway uh, it's off to the Patriarch and then finally uh, we will be on our way to the next part of my Mass Effect coverage where we will actually get to fire our guns again so um, yes you'll all be very excited about that I'm sure if you're into the action rather than the talking again I, I'm just amazed by the visual fidelity um, that the high-res pack has brought to the game I mean this just looks fabulous and um, you know this game's what was it 2007 for Mass Effect 1 and then 2010 I think 2012 at the latest for Mass Effect 2 so um, yeah I mean it just looks great as I say Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 in my opinion they could release them like tomorrow and I'd still be really happy particularly as I say if they, they came out with them high res textures anyway here you go I'm being really nice and insist in this Batarian drinks his poison drink or I'll poke his eyes out one at a time and you can see it, it doesn't end well for him and he gets replaced by oh is it a Turian oh yes and if you want to you can sit down and admire the Asari's artistic endeavours anyway um, yeah oh do the shepherd dance here you go Patriarch now he's a great character as you can see he's like oh um, he's got close family well if you want to get to him kill his family then he'll come at you and then you can kill him so very Krogan way of dealing with stuff and this guy is the ex owner of Omega he actually got defeated by Arya and uh, he's been kept on by her as a sort of symbolic pet and he's proudly owning the Patriarch uh, label because of course being a Krogan that's pretty much the only way he's probably able to live with himself but uh, he's not 100% happy with it and as you can see he's, he's got a little bit of bluster about him but he's definitely a broken man and uh, it's uh, an interesting little bit of interaction you can have with him and as I say there is a little mission later on whereby you can actually choose to kind of change a the things up a bit between the patriarch and Arya and it's a lovely little touch and he does remind me a lot of Rex um, he's got that classic Krogan look 
and it's also interesting to see him as a Krogan out of armor. Uh, you don't normally see see them not out, you know, in their full armor suit. And uh, they're, they're a great race. I really like the Krogan. Um, yes, they are potentially a problematic race, and you can see why some people maybe thought the Genophage was a good solution. Um, but uh, yeah, yes. Uh, Definitely one of my favourite uh, sets of characters are the Krogan, which we'll come back to because we do have the option to get a new Krogan crewmate within Mass Effect 2. And unfortunately for me, he's probably my least favourite Krogan of all the Krogans. But uh, yeah, he's he's got some interesting aspects to him. Anyway, uh, Patriarch here talking about his background, talking about how he and Arya... Um, kind of interact with each other and how he's ended up as a sort of lieutenant to Arya with Arya being the boss. So anyway, as I say, um, that's probably enough talking. You're probably dying for me to go and shoot things and we are about to go off and do that. So that's going to be in the next video coming up after this one. And um, hopefully I will not totally noob it up because... Um, last time I uh, played this mission I totally forgot to do something which made my life a lot harder uh, in the mission um, but uh, yeah that uh, you know even if you do forget to do bits it's still a fun mission so Archangel it is now when I come to this door I got a feeling a Batarian door uh, bodyguard is gonna be um, getting in my way and being annoying so that's kind of interesting little touch that you've got someone uh, blocking you and as you can see there there's an annoyed human who unfortunately does repeat his dialogue a bit too much which does give me horrible flashbacks of mass effect one's enemies everywhere and i will destroy you uh quotes so uh, mass effect 2 does still suffer from some of the failings of mass effect one ah uh, captain gavon now he doesn't seem to think the vulture are too much of a threat how little does he know anyway we will stop the video just in front of the recruiter and i think we're about two hours of gameplay it says so see you next time